as fights are about to break out here, but right now everyone fighting for real estate. As you talked about it, we know who sits up on top of the King of the Castle, but just below him, the Lords, the Ladies, the Dukes, and the Duchesses right now said it, Cammy and Teak. They're happy with this blade of land that they pulled out over on the east side. They didn't have to rotate too far. One Elam, a great Elam out in the open to potentially be able to harpoon some loot away. One of the uses that players missed, they see a launch pad get taken up, not to recycle and instead go back to their own tarp. They've already invested a solid amount here. It looks like they're going to set up for potentially a little bit of a deeper and a later launch pad of their own. Yes, they will, but we know T is holding at least another one. Potentially look up to his high ground, but Hanas and Queasy had that built out perfectly. If you come up to max height, they're meeting you with a pump and backing you down as Thomas looks for any other frags in the connection. Multiple different split layers to get Thomas all the way up in the front. Queasy dropping the damage in the backside. And Osno taking a lot of damage. CRR was kind of a pit stop in their highway of build so far. They're still moving. No team falling just yet. 16 still alive. Thomas now has an angle on wood built vertically down below. That's huge. Nacos going down. Thomas HD popping off the Aqua and Fast. Roki, they fall inside the storm or the fall damage. That is huge. It's a big high ground retake team that's not going to be here in the end game. And it's Jose picking up the uh, oh, confirmation there onto Aqua, but these are two max, max pulls. We talked about just how far it went. So, so many of these trios, they already burned their launch pads. They burned all of this. And up on the high ground, this is the reason we saw the commit so early. You get all of this control. They haven't been shot at once. They're just raining shots from the top down. They're popping peppers, but it's just so they can get more available targets. As Thomas, he doesn't have a sniper, but he's making this AR look like one, just picking out heads whenever he wants. However, on the low ground, Savage picking up Fullnet. Andretta gets confirmed himself. Wazi gets a knock onto Michael. Sinek picks up Crow as he finally goes down. We're closing in on the top 10. Still cascading placement points going through. Vadil getting the full confirm on the rifle there as James continues to go ahead. And we still have some big, big name trios up here in game one of the first FNCS qualifier. Chapter two, season eight. Europe is bringing the heat and we hop straight down to the low ground. Oh, this is so tough for any team that's down here. Low ground's kind of like half elevated. It's really stuffed all the way at the bottom, and everyone's gonna have to move through a river. And join us down, so it's Benji Savage, Dreamhack style. Let's see what they got. Oh, Ooh. defense with a big shot from Benji as well. Another drop down backwards. He has the defensive builds, but it's not gonna be enough. Savage now left alone by himself. Has to push all the way forward. Can he clutch this? Is Seti, Cammy, and Teak look to be all alive as Cammy goes down. Savage with a big play on a Styler down below, but he's still far away from the storm. Trying to move in. Goes a little bit up for height. One tick of Storm will take him out. He needs a big refresh here. Yeah, you can see he has exactly the amount of HP he needed, but unfortunately going to be picked up because again, the zone is pulling just ever so slightly up the hill. And then you get that one burn and everyone's going to go down because up on the high ground, they've been single tarping the whole way. Finally now double tarping, just raining shots down in Thomas HD does not miss the battle for second on the low ground just trying to hang in there it looks like steady and co might be able to pick it up or 4 cr will be on the flip side of it no you can see now just three v one teak the last one on the opposite side he will go down but 90 lives in the victory royale Queasy and Anos are game one winners still up on their feet, but no Elam so far. Don't forget, match number one, they were able to take control of high ground, but they did it in the fifth circle when the zone dropped on top of their head, this time being forced to rotate away. But Thomas with two, fit, three fantastic precision weapons on his side from that epic charge shotgun, legendary AR, and then that rare marksman rifle. If he gets an opportunity to start beaming shots, we already know what he's capable of, but that's like the fourth time I've seen Hen's name in the feed in the top left. I would love to watch either Hen or Etsy in his trio because they're just picking up Elims and right now, well, it's the fourth time I've seen his name up there, but only one Elim, some knocks coming through, but not quite confirmation. Still has two Elims now to his name, so confirms going over and right as I say that, the other trio gets picked up. Slobe, Etsy, and Keiko, the team with 11 Elims last game, goes down Hen. Great about face to end up getting the full confirm <laughs> onto Carmi and nearly a triple dink right there and Hen up on the high ground. He says, who are you to challenge me? Well, Aqua says, uh, I'm the dude a World Cup champion, I am here. Hi. And he gets his classic aqua chop as well. The whole high ground gets baited. 
brought down. Vescar Tulix now have to find Hen once again, and he is here to play. High ground, here we go. 560 above for Hen. They're trying to find a home here inside mid, but it's not going to be possible. Harpooning through multiple builds. They're going through this lair, and they want to find some pain. Hen is going to lead the charge. Vescar takes over, blocked by a wall, and now sandwiched in between the backside. There's a window open, and that's not a very pleasant breeze coming through. That's a big shotgun shot. They have to move down, down, and down, but they can't even find low ground. Another mid lair. A man chasing on the backside. There's some rats in the zone, and they can't get exterminated. Wings is still here, looking to take height away, but it's fast Roki CRR and Aqua on a split layer. That's going to be unchallengeable, and now it's just rest guard left alone on low. Yeah, Falcon's player trying to clutch up, do his best, get a little bit of space here, holding on, knowing that every tree that drops is an additional point. Seti, Kami going down there. Looks like Teak was picked up. Yes, Master getting that one. So another point over for Rest Guard there. You can see Scram getting picked up. And it is CRR and Aqua up on height. Raining shots down. Anasso picking up a double knock there. Fonada and Scram getting confirmed over. So Anas, Thomas, and Co. still picking up points in the deal. Janice and Noah Riley on our screen now sitting on four Elons. We got a bunch of trios still just hip to hip. Thomas popping off, Queezy and Anas had a back to back to back turtle formation, but it gets cracked by Wings once again. Now, Lyzen's left. He's the last person of that squad. Taking out Erikin. Height though, just got all those mats from Thomas's body and have a refresh to play with. Vadil is still trying to clutch, lands a big 40 in. Is that a knock and a finish? Yes! In the blink of an eye, I mean, if yours were closed, you missed it. Vadil stays alive. I was just about to say, I barely even saw the shot animation there going off. He's going to end up getting the speed effect from the Pepper as well. And that's a huge three-point swing already. 105, make it another three points. Add an additional six. And Vadil said, Hen, whatever you can do, I can do better. Pushing his team up to six even and a top seven performance now as Fulnate goes down to Maestro. And we're getting a great individual clutch here out of Vadil. But can he get a, some additional space? He just needs to get back. As you see, we are pulling just a little bit above into another previously built off so players could potentially be funneled up into him, but he needs to avoid for Strokey, Aqua, and CRR just raining shots down and looking for targets. Two full trios trying to control low for the moment. And Aqua still on height, dropping the pressure. Seems like they have an unlimited portion of ammo, and Vadil's their next target down to three mats. That's tragic. And Alex does pick up Maestro, so they're having a little bit of advantage on that low ground fight. Vadil still trying to be very careful, letting everyone else make the noise. Going by undetected, finally drops down three players, but doesn't take the shot. Trigger discipline, big one, 115, but now he's found out. Has to really work with the movement here. A big edit, he's still not down. Makes it all the way to top four, and now this 3v3v3 three v3 v3 concoction of an endgame begins. That's disgusting by the deal, by the way. We tuned in at top 15, and we were like, hey, any point to get is nice, top four, and two additional elims, but now 3v3v3v3, three, 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 and you can see, or 3v3v3, three, 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 three. commitment goes in, Aqua getting the knock onto XP, but not gonna get the confirm in time, so that extra HP going over, however you can see, zone control going to CRR, no Chugs cannons in the back of the zone, but there is a Chugs splash, Zinni currently has the HP lead, but doesn't matter when you take a left hand peek against Frustroke, he finds the clutch. Yeah, but at the same time, in terms of game number one and two, Nas, Thomas, and Queezy have had very, very favorable zones. This is still a very good one. And I was going to say, they're going to go through a lot of teams. They go under all of them through the bridge. They have so many people they were contesting with, but just chose to skip that cinematic and go straight to the gameplay. They're starting to move now. But this little bit of a stuffage with the edits might kind of hold them back. The other teams get ahead of them. They just kind of get the lay of the land. It's only jerky that's kind of really a problem for them. But they get spammed by racks down below. Xenolith goes all the way up for height. And Queez is actually launch fighting there too. They're going to fight. It might be a height retake. X Squeeze, Forger, and Alex. They stay low. They're just playing the zones. 372 damage below with 13 players that need to go down. These guys need to get active really fast. Yeah, this, the action's going to happen swift, and you can see the battle for high ground. Anas trying to take it away. Him and Queasy pushing it down, but you see for Strokey, still just a couple tarps leave, and it's not that strong off. They need to be aware of a tarp or reinforced very quickly. They're sitting on two elimination. The Irish trio being forced all the way down there. As you can see, Zestin picking up the Elam onto battle. We're into the cascading place points, so plus one for everyone, and then plus one for each trio that drops. But the zone pulls directly back over where we just were, giving high ground not as many opportunities to really pick on eliminations the eliminations are going to now happen in that mid and the low ground area where people are going to be running back into each other if they're forced to change tarps you can see right now our current leaders below storms there's only one elimination only one placement point coming through right now in that cascading area so not a ton
ton of points just barely picked up. It would only be an eight point game, which is much off of their pace. They're looking for anything, but with zone pulling back over Shio, opportunities are few and far between. And as I say that, a huge elimination picks up the legendary burst, puts them above. Surge knows, no nope. below. 49 below, still need to find a few more shots with this big bounce back. It's impossible for them to move. Queasy almost lost his ankles on the way down. Big pressure from Reason and Chapix, but they hold on for now. Thomas HD is the cost of this big readjustment of height. It just got chopped about seven layers, and Anas wants revenge. Goes for a few bullets. A second bounce back comes in. That buys them a lot of time, but now placement will be that much longer to obtain. Anas and Queasy have to do this as a duo. They have no white heels, so Queasy is in a world of hurt and trouble, but they're also kind of in your choose own, your own adventure type of book right now. Fast Roki is going down. They have to make decisions to win this game. And you can see 11 builds on a Nos and Queasy with no, and we talked about it before, how it was such an absolutely thin build and doubling back over the pullback got them chopped not once but twice. However, the amount of resources to take it away from them might not necessarily be there. You can see the shots now being rained up towards them. We'll hop back down to the low ground as just barely able to survive through the storm surge. We have our leaders, X Squeeze and Andalex. Force the art was the cost to be able to hop, skip, and jump their way in. As Tayson takes out Queasy, there's a fight going on the high ground and Tayson taking away. Can Control. Queasy getting confirmed over. We're into our top 12 as X Squeeze and Co. Just trying to find it. You can see a trio right on the opposite side of that, trying to get ahead. But Reason, Chapix, able to take away high ground thanks to Tayson, finding a huge Elim onto Queasy. A jungle gym of builds on height, and Taste and Reason Chapix have that forearm strength. They're really just navigating this perfectly. They took out the top team up there, but it's still nine teams inside the ninth zone. This is just an absolute mess of builds down below that Taste and Chapix and Reason have to destroy over and over again. So many teams with this bounce back still have those hard mats. There's metal cones being dropped in this ninth zone. 45 seconds still left, and no team has gone down finally. Benji's still alive and picks off Hellfire. There's so much potential on this mid ground, it's a big vertical squeeze that's happening right now. And Taste and Chapis and Reason, they can find a way to penetrate all the way down below. Zero builds on Taste, and the question is, does Chapix have any? They're not building out. It looks like they're going to be forced to drop. You can see Sean VP trying to go up. We hop back down. X squeeze on the low ground. Legendary charge has the has the harpoon as well, trying to find whatever he can give his teammate. You can't take that many ticks, son. It's not worth the exchange there. One more tick and he will go down. He's just holding out. No white heels will be off. Look to potentially make a med kit play for his partner singing the Kony. He can sell going down. Jerky going down. Rifle picking up reason. Jerky picking up taste and the drop down comes through. But the question is, Andalix with the med kit play in the back of the zone. Benji hunting Andalix. The 1v1 ended up coming through. Falcon Andalix finds one, but Mr. Fishy wraps it up and that is a monstrous 11 elim performance and right now everyone from the backside is doing max launch pads they'll land right beside teak study and cami's lair in just a moment this should get very very hairy all the way down below it's milan mitro and arian who've actually made it off of spawn and are chilling queasy though goes all the way all the way for height and lands it nikov's still alive looks like benji's also popping off inside the feed agam on the backside has been picked off so many games in a row but this time it's gonna look like the same thing for him as he tries to move forward too Cascading placement points. Hey, show me Benji Fishy. They went on a run last game. He's already gotten at least two here over in the side. I want to see what the boy has. Hot off of the duo's dream hack victory right now. We're on board here again. The team who is averaging a top three placement. We can see why creating tons of space. But as I say that, oh. we take it down. Forzi are taking it down. All on the back of Andalex. The Falcon player going to off to disengage as our first place trio gets taken down. They're into the cascading placement points. Again, we said they needed a solid game to secure themselves for qualification. But still, Mr. Savage picking up an Elim as well. Benji Fishing and Co. just going off. We don't necessarily see Andretta. Yes, there he is. Five Elims for them already. 110 points. They're trying to take over the first place spot. Give me the Elim. Punch up. A big chance in total points. Oh no, Savage going down actually. And now Andretta. He's going to be feeling the hurt on the front side of this tarp. No help there. Benji with a big charge pump shot, though. Takes down QB Master. But wherever QB is, two of his teammates will follow. Hiding in the shadows, Benji tossed around like a flopped flopper. No chance for him to be alive there. Fred finally takes him down. All up to Andretta to try to secure this type of big stream of points. It's top 13 for the moment. We can see what he does. Yeah, Cammy got taken out right there on the full confirmed six eliminations following their 11 from last game. That's tons of points racking up. Don't forget in round two, it's plus two. You can see Mitro picking up Fredoxy in the feed in the top left. You can see Adretta trying to fight for his tournament here, pushing through right now. 
you can see going to get taken out unfortunately but still just inside the top 10 Mitro popping off on the low ground that's his third elimination on the back side of the zone see if he's able to get some space because still up on the high ground you have Chapix Jason and Co raining down shots Mitro picks up another one but Andalex Still just pushing forward, getting the solo clutch, not able to find the timing for the med kit, but hops into an old tarp, able to find the shot, but not quite able to find the second. Still needs a little bit of space as Mitro finally goes down, and Andalus goes down with their worst performance yet at top six. So, so impressive. Now it's down to reason to take away all the points from height. Kinsel cannot go down. 4 HP finally taken out as Taysen wipes away the low ground. Milan somehow with Aryan Lee. One of the biggest and most craziest low ground situations. They survived it and are here at the end. Three teams left with seven players. Taysen and Chapix Reasons are one of the only teams that still have all their members alive. It's up to them break things down, but they're so far away from low ground. These shots will not hit the builds as hard. Not taking any risks. They want this to be a very clean win. And I mean, it's been clean. Part of the reason why we weren't just sitting there watching high ground the entire time is because it's been this the entire time is them just raining down rifle shots as the three, the zone pulling back down, finally going to unleash Chapix and let him go down. But the second he does, he gets taken out. And all of a sudden, what should have been a comfortable victory royale is now a 2v2 where Reason has no effective HP. Tasten does have the 90 to be able to make a med kit play, but it is now basically turned into a 1v2 where you hope Reason gets a one shot where he drops down. And as I say that, Reason gets the one shot <laughs> as he drops. He gets both? Reason? How insane! We want the points. We want to play in the finals. We've heard too much of people talking smack. And Mitro is here. Epic pump. Legendary SMG. We've seen this story before. Savage picks up an Elam. Andalex picks up an Elam. Them making the end game might as well secure the qual for the top two. We know they're through. Up on the high ground, Razumi is able to actually back them down a little bit. Wolfie trying to trade out. Takes it with a disgusting headshot there. Wolfie gets absolutely obliterated for the cost of reason. Razumi also gets taken down. It's five Elims for Tayson? What? This is actually a huge thing to keep in the pocket for Tayson. 113 points is not enough to solidify a top five. He needs to get even higher right now, and he's moving with it. At the same time, Thomas Nasson Queasy faded high ground to be a thing to actually take. Get three teams colliding. I think I also saw Benji go down in the feed, so all these big eliminators we've been seeing for the past three games aren't here now. Who will take the role of getting all these big points? Savage still alive on low ground with Q roll right beside him. He's popped those cabbages. The emotes have been played. The heals are in play as well. Now it's time for him to really get the shock and active. Yeah, he has to go. He's below the surge. There's only one other trio who's going to be getting hit by it. He only needs a tag, but again, every single point matters. They've only been able to pick up two extra placement points here from the cascading ones. 37 HP. He survives two more storm surge sticks. One more storm surge stick. The zone ticks them as well. Could this be the end? Mr. Savage, not quite savage enough. Storm surge will take him down. Keeping an eye looking across. Is Mitro still up on his feet? Yes, he is right there in the middle of the low ground. Give me him. Give me the liquid player. Give me the veteran. Try to push and take it all away. Milan goes down to Xerox, but they're into the top 13. You can see they already have the four eliminations. Mitro wants to get wall to wall. He's looking to find Edis on the backside of the zone. The loop boy trio up on the high ground. This is the second to last game. Top five is all that matters and who can establish it as Arian Lee loses the entirety of his shield there for only a quick little hop. He's going to regret that reposition. Might just be up to Mitro with the HP that he has. We're tuned in with Thomas right now inside of a wall. Looking to face against a whole trio and getting sandwiched from the back as well. The roof isn't safe either. It's a blender. And these men just got juiced completely. No chance whatsoever. We tune back in with any other team that has a chance to kind of survive. Push all the way forward. Iron Lee's down. It's all up to Mitro. Alive by himself. Takes down Chapix. Low ground. Here we go. Two Elims for now. With boxes. They're all his all around. Except for that brick one on the left. He's looking for it. He knows where the players are going to come from. Big B! He tracks Reason through the walls and takes him out. That's the third. Now elevation, kind of tricky, but no problem for Micho. He lands another. This one, oh, Harry, see if he the storm. Backwards defense, now up top. It's not enough for him to handle, but what a display all the way towards the top five.
Top five with six eliminations. That's another performance pushing it towards them. But this is a team who is walking the walk. They're talking the talk and they're picking up another qualification here. They're going down, but that is in fourth place. They're going to be happy. Hen, refs guard on the low ground. The loop boy trio up on the high ground. 3v2v1 with the solo sandwich in between. And XC Maxine is going down. The question is, can Hen and refs guard rip away a victory royale? They desperately need points are at a premium right now. Now, Hen what? gets it started off, and back-to-back -back refs guard gets it started off. The charge in the back of the zone, you heard it tank, and it tanks through. Takes it down. High Joe trying to take it out, drops down, finds one. Is he going to be able to connect on the other? High Joe, no, he gets denied. A brilliant shot from the first one, but Hen says cluck, cluck. Five eliminations, and he takes it down. Him and refs guard combine all the way through for eight total elims, the victory royale. And I just know we basically saw Andalex and Co qualify. That's going to be enough. The rest of the leaderboard, Shio, is going to be an utter clown fiesta. I mean, that everything's up in the air. The movement in that last play from everyone involved is insane. Mitro is just popping off against people he can't even see. What we need to see is what the desk has to say about that one. Zeke Levin and Reese, that was amazing. So much energy here in EU. We got Mitro. We got X Squeeze making it into those final moments. The solo efforts across the board are next level. You know what, Levin? For a moment, for one moment, I thought is Ref Guard gonna lose this 1v2. There's no way. And I I oh I hesitated, but then Ref Guard said, no, Zeke, shh, listen, it's me, dog. Come on, man. Don't worry about it. I got this. My bad. But the execution from Anas, Thomas, and Queasy, I mean, they've looked so good being able to take out the high ground and the fact that Aqua has fallen relatively early on the back half of these games. Rifle gets a little bit of BL on BL action there, taking out Seti and pushing himself further into that fifth place spot. We said 134. Well, they got it there. They're tied up. It comes down, though to the tiebreakers, which would end up being the average elements and average placements, which means you don't want to leave it to that. You want to at least outlast one more trio and make somebody else make the play. Take care of your business, which is the only thing they're thinking of right now. And they got a nice little launch pad if they want to recycle there, but with where the zone and the builds above them are, it's not necessarily efficient. Meanwhile, Hen going on a rampage, but coming in the game with just 77 points, it might be a story of too little, too late in a battle for placement points there. As the observers give us a nice little wide shot, you see Mitro back up he's on the middle in that scrum there on the bottom side him and arian lee are hip to hip as head picks up what i think is his fourth elon there onto his x we hop back on board with our current tied fifth place tiebreakers in play 135 it comes through they're now inside the lead holding on the fifth for the moment mitchell's actually taken down and dreaded in the feed though as he's moving in, trying to catch up with the Elims, all right for has to do with Jerky and Kinsel is survive. 136, the placement finally reigning in. Everyone cannot handle the pressure. They're getting squeezed. Rifle, though, chooses to go all the way down to low. Flames actually lands there first. Hen, Trulix, and Rush Guard at the front of the zone, all alive as a full trio. Mitro and Arjun Lee above them in a mid ground layer. There's about five teams below them and at least three above them right now. But in their vicinity, on their actual tarp layer, there's no one. They have a chance to breathe. Use the the materials they have a launch pad as well to take all the way up the height slowly takes down refs guard this is stress they need so many more elims and there's so much time to get them to the 25 players still alive that golden charge from arian lee will pack a punch mitro also has the pump available to use squeezy and Austin thomas hd are going to be the first line of pressure they might be chopped down Yes, they go at C and Slovic. Don't forget, they also came in with 99 points, 116. But right now, it's going to be about the victory royales. But Jerky, he says, I'm shutting the door on the dream. Aaron Lee gets taken down. And Anas takes down Micho. And it was too little too late despite breaking the record the 60 point game they'll fall just short kazeko etsy and slovic they need the victory royale and they need all the elims and they need it now 105 but tags in the zone he has the caught cabbage is going to pop the flop as well tries to find a little bit of an angle towards the outside sprays and find some wood find some shots 30 30 30 finds the tags but not quite enough and no elims coming through they will be able to get the current firm there and they push up to 130 it's getting close shio if they can get the victory royale this Plenty Elims on the table. I don't see Rifle or any of his trio up. That's what we need to watch. Give me Zeko. Give me Etsy. Give me Slovay as they play for their qualification life. The Victory Royale should do it if they can get enough. But the question is, can they get it, Shio? They'll have to take down Titans who've held on height the whole game, the whole day. 
Thomas HD with another elimination. I think Q-Roll is standing in between them right now, but this will definitely go down to a 3v3. Psycho, no mats, just shots, and boom, a big 70. Another one as one person goes out in the feed. Cabbages, text on the other side. The charge pump lands for 90 on the left. Psycho's doing it. Two players down. Oh. It looks like it's going to be a 1v1 up top. There's one thing just held up by a ramp. He's going for the shoot down. Will it hit the harpoon? Two seconds. The cabbages had more time. Psycho's eating for his life, and he wins the game. 143 points. The shots, the clutch, they're unstoppable. They needed the W. They needed every Elim. That is right. Oh my gosh. I just can't even believe. So this is what, in case you guys didn't quite understand what we were kind of breaking down not that long ago. Look at your fifth place. Look at your sixth place. Okay. Top five are the ones that go through this last game. Okay. The first five games, EQ, SD, Slobe, they were like, okay, going into game six. 